Hey friends, you guys are going to love I2P. Today we're actually going to be looking at I2P Plus. Really need to diversify our tool set. Let's go ahead and try out the installer. And then once you open it up, hit next. We will select our path for installation. And it's going to create the path. Once we've completed the install, next we need to start up I2P and then we need to set up our browser. We're going to proxy things through I2P. It's going to be similar to how when you proxy through the Tor network. And what you're looking at right now is the official I2P router console. So if you want to anonymize your traffic and you want to work with hidden services in a way that's fully optimized for hidden services and possibly even contribute to the network without having to do anything to do so, you're going to want to try I2P. I2P also has other benefits, including the fact that you, as a user, are also part of the mix network using garlic routing in contrast to onion routing. This also is an anonymity benefit, considering that all users are also the nodes of the network. So you may notice uh, faster hidden services than on the Tor network in some cases. I'm using uh, LibreWolf but you may be using Firefox or any other browser of your choice and you're going to want to change your proxy settings. Similar to how when we want to Torify something we need to use the local host proxy and something that Tor doesn't offer that I2P does offer is UDP protocol and so that's just one difference. Another thing Tor uses a directory whereas I2P network is constantly analyzing continually profiling the nodes in order to select a peer that way. And so once you do manual proxy configuration, localhost or 127.0.0.1, put port 4444, and then what you're going to do is you're going to hit OK. And after you've done that, and you've started the I2P process. Once you have set your proxy settings, go to 127.0.0.1 colon 7667. And at this point, it's going to say, uh oh, security warning. Anyways, you're going to hit accept the risk and continue. At this point, you're now in the I2P Plus router. We have a great selection of things to check out. Of course, there's Hacker News, there's other things. You got Bellingcat, which is involved in open source intelligence, so you can find some interesting stuff that way. You got distributed denial of secrets. You can go ahead and check out some ebooks. You've got DuckDuckGo, so if you're used to using DuckDuckGo, there's a lot of anonymity benefits here over alternatives out there. So I highly suggest trying this out. Give it a try. And the great thing about it is once you've set up I2P+, you've done your proxy settings, you're able to view these I2P websites. Uh, at that point, you can even browse the normal web because you have everything added already. So say I want to go to my blog. I can actually go to my blog. It's not going to affect me. I want to also introduce you to IRC. Have you heard of IRC? IRC stands for Internet Relay Chat. Years ago I used to run my own Unreal IRC server and um, I still like to use IRC. But a lot of people are concerned because normally on IRC your real IP address will be displayed for other users. And that's not really a preferable thing. So once we've started the I2P Plus service and it's running in the background, we can actually add the I2P IRC server. And this will protect us from those kinds of revelations of our personal information. Now one thing I do suggest is your username, make it pretty vague. That way it's not a unique fingerprint. So if you're on various chat servers, a lot of people don't consider this. But the username, you could have something very unique like, you know, say T Jerry or something random like that. But the more random something is, the more of a fingerprint it becomes. And so what what I'm suggesting to you is on IRC, leave something like user and I'll show you more about what I mean once we connect. Then you're going to want to set your nickname. This is HexChat, by the way. You want to try this out. It's a great IRC client. And you can browse all the other IRC networks out there. And 2600 actually has its own IRC network. I added in this 
and there's so many different servers you can check out. This will open up a whole new world for you. So if you're interested in tech, you're interested in anonymity, privacy, anything, open source, big, big open source platforms, IRC is really a preferable old school way to chat. And it's a great way to learn more. You'll learn a lot in these chat rooms. So we're going to go ahead and we will show you the network. So what you'll need to do to add the I2P as a chat server, an IRC server, is you're going to add 127.0.0.1, use port 6668. And once you do that, you can then save it under whatever name you want. I chose I2P because that's what it is. So we'll go ahead and hit connect next and it's going to allow me to connect anonymously into the I2P IRC network. In fact, I'll do a tutorial on IRC later. Let's go ahead and just show you how to get right into chatting. We go to server, drop it down to channel list, then hit download list. Once you download the list, this is going to be all of the different channels or otherwise known as chat rooms on the server. At that point you can double click them and each time you double click them it will join and so you can join things that interest you. So we're already in. I can check out information on myself by doing this just happens to be my nickname at this point you can see that there is no IP address available to others here so they see this long string where normally on many IRC networks that would show your actual host name of your home IP address or if you're connecting through another way the exit point of that this is how you can chat you can already start talking you can register your nicknames which I'll probably do another tutorial on that so what you would do to register a nickname is go ahead and message nickserve and do help this will help provide you some of the commands that you can send you can do uh, register and then you know what you would like password here and then email here and you'll have a registered nickname that means nobody else will be able to assume your identity on that IRC server so if they have nickserve chance serve stuff like that you can protect your identity that way and so that's how you can use and jump on the I2P IRC chat. Now this is interesting. This is Free Haven. They have an I2P as well. Now Free Haven, what is that? It's an interesting website I check out. I actually have it bookmarked. But if you go through here, you can see various different selected papers in anonymity. There's other resources here, but it's quite a broad review of different studies on you know, privacy, anonymity, so there's some interesting things on that site. They also have a hidden service and a clear net site. Now I do suggest joining the chat. That's somewhere you might be able to learn something new. Same with the I2P forum. So that is as simple as going to i2pforum.i2p and there are tutorials there as well. It's a nice little community. Highly suggest checking out I2P plus it's definitely the place to go for people who just want to get into I2P it's cool about this you can actually host your own I2P website go right to the web server section and once you do that you can learn to set up an anonymous web server it's as simple as moving files into the right directory here as you can see the instructions right here course you're going to have to have the I2P router running so just like the Tor client you're going to always need running to Torify anything you also are going to need an I2P router connected to the I2P network so once you have that you can simply set up your anonymous website this way and I may do that with the private bin Tor hidden service I'm going to also add an I2P page for that I want to make sure people have access using I2P as well because I think it's an awesome community, great, great project. This is one of the most important projects we have right now. You know, people need to diversify their tool set to deal with the threats to our anonymity rights and our privacy rights. You know, everyone should have the right to selectively reveal themselves to the world. You know, anything less than that 
is enabling totalitarianism. And that's just how I see it. I think it's too dangerous to give up our privacy anonymity. I think it is, you know, it leads to all bad things. Nothing good comes of it. And that's what I want to leave you with. Check out I2P. We're going to explore more of this. But I wanted to do this introduction just to get you guys started so you can explore. There's I2P mail, so you can do mail as well. You can use any browser to follow this. As you can see, the I2P mail, it's as easy as this. You click on the I2P mail. You can then create a new account, and you can read mail using the internal I2P network keeping everything anonymous, safe, and secure. Also, I2P, of course, uses end-to-end -end encryption as well. And you can still connect to the regular ClearNet website. So you don't need a dedicated browser just for I2P, but it is a good idea to have one. That's what I have today, guys. Make sure to like, share, and subscribe. Visit the blog at buymeacoffee.com slash and I will be back later with more on how to protect your privacy.